Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, May 14th, 2019. Happy birthday to my baby girl. She's 27 today. Can't believe I have a 27 year old, Courtney Byram. Uh, I'm here with my friend, the beautiful Maria Nunez. Uh, so let us know you can hear us and see us um, we're a little teeny bit early but you know we have no idea what's going on it's dark in this room <laughs> we want to make sure we're all connected Tony Figueroa is on give us a heart or a thumbs up Tony uh, we definitely want to hear what Maria has to say I love the topic of today and so I think it's super important this is her first foray yes. into Facebook Live. So see how never good you look, Facebook right? Live. You've never done Facebook yes. Live, so we're good. All right, Dave Charles is watching. Obviously, I tagged you, so I have no idea how, how some of these people are. Uh, <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna be good. All right, Wendy Stewart's on. Wendy, welcome. Let us know you can hear us and see us um, because you want to hear what she has to say. All right. So nobody said, "Hey, Ted, I can't hear you," so we're golden. Okay. Cool. All right, Linda, what's up? You got to come down from Ocala and come on the show, Linda. I would love that very much. <laughs> All right, so um, tell us a little bit about you. everybody. Danny Hernandez, hello, what's up, buddy? Uh, everybody always likes to know the origin story, where you're from, a little bit about you. Um, so welcome and tell us a little bit. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to have you on here. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. I was born in New York, um, but we moved to Florida. Which part? After. You're a Queens in girl, Queens. right? Yeah, in Queens. Um, been in Central Florida most of my life. My mom took us to live in Costa Rica for a few years, like in middle school. Um, but yeah, I've been here in Central Florida most of my life. And um, yeah. Why? Went, why did they move down here? Weather. Um, weather. My family's from a very hot city in Colombia. They just couldn't do. <laughs> it's the, so cold They couldn't up do north. the winters anymore, no. so they came down here, um, and you know, made roots down here. And they went to UCF. Oh, I'm a, I'm a Go Knights person, too. I <laughs> actually went when it was UCF. I'm not FTU, guys, so don't date me. What did you get your degree in? My degree is in English Literature and Women's Studies. Oh, my God. All right, so English Lit, Danny from NAR in Washington. What's up, buddy? Hey, Mandy. So tell us about that. So why English Lit and Women's Studies? What did you want to do with that? Well, I was thinking about going to law school after graduating college, and then I was so tired of school. And I was like, I well, let it. me go work for a law firm and see if I if I even like it. So I went to work for a real estate attorney, and then I got into title and did that for about three years. So. So you yeah. liked some of it, but you didn't want to go. You didn't want to go to. You don't want to pursue the law part. I didn't want to get into debt and do all that. And then sure. I was seeing all these checks that realtors were making. My mom was a realtor since I was like three years old, so she had been telling me, when are you gonna you know, use your license when you're going to go and sell. And I was like, no, I'm too scared. I need a salary. I need to know where my check's coming every week. Isn't that interesting, <laughs> right? So your mom, grew, your mom, you were raised in an environment where it was commission. That was how you yes, lived. Yes. But you didn't want that. No, I didn't want that one in stability and, you know. And you know what, but with stability, stuff. you know what comes with that. So you've got this kind yeah. of interesting boredom. I, I have the sense that you realized and tell us about it you realize, all right, so the commission thing can't be that bad because I'm not really happy with the salary job either. Well, I was miserable. I would work all the time. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, I was, it wasn't, it's not like I was making, you know, six figures. So I just couldn't do it anymore. And you're working with somebody else. And I was working for somebody else. And, you know, you know what's weird about my personality? I, I don't do well with authority. I don't do well with people telling me what to do with my time. So oh my it, God, how did you ever work for anybody then? <laughs> I worked for someone for three years. <laughs> That's um, hard. But then I was like, you know, this isn't me. It's not the real me. <laughs> well, you know, it's difficult. I think you're right. So you you want the stability. So there's a trade-off. Yeah. You want to have stability. You want benefits. You want to know what your paycheck is every two weeks. Yeah. You want to know the days off you have. I call those people that love and thrive in that the worker bee. That is, yeah. they, they love that. It's super important to them. That's what drives them. That's actually what makes them comfortable. Yeah. Then you have the people like you and me and mm -hmm. Anna, who's behind the scenes. Hi, <laughs> Anna. Um, and you know that that is not what really feeds you. That's, yeah. that's not ever going to be where you're happy place exactly mm -hmm. uh, and I think that people have to figure that out you know do you want to trade it because then it all becomes about you then it's yeah. all on you so yeah. how was that when you made the tr transition you 
you go from working for the man, that's always my joke, working three years the there. Working for the man and working for my mom. And working for my <laughs> mom. So you go and now you're straight commission because yeah. that's the world we live in. Yeah. How did that, how did that work out initially? Um, well, I told myself if I can save $5,000, I'll quit my job. Mind you, I was 24 at the time. And I lived you were with a my baby. Mom. So I, you know, it's not like I had a mortgage to pay or anything. But in my mind, I was like, if I can save that money, then I'll quit my job. And that's what I did. So I quit. And how did you save it? Did you? What did you do? How did I you? I saved it from a paycheck. Okay, so you, yeah. so you put you on you were kind of working yeah. where you were giving that you weren't spending all the money you got. No, 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 no. I've and I've never been like that. I think it's important. You're so to, responsible. To I was save. not responsible at that age. <laughs> yeah, and it was funny because I quit, and then my second sale was like 2.2 million. It was something nice. crazy, and I took that check and I put it in the bank, and I still never spent it. <laughs> That Wait, like all right, so years, so talk years. about that. So so people are going to go, oh, well, your mom's in it. So, of course, she had a $2.2 .2 million <laughs> sale. So talk about how that is, because I think people want, they want to be entrepreneurs, which is what yeah. you are, right? So yeah. you get out, you're not dependent on anybody else. You're trying to figure it out. You got to pay your bills. Your health insurance isn't included. No, uh, it's, you, it's, it's very expensive. Yeah. But how do you go out then and build this business where you can get a $2.2 .2 million deal? Well, you just kind of have to treat, I think sometimes people are too quick to discount, like the clients that come through the door. I agree. And the lady who ended up buying that house, you know, if you look at her, you know, you she isn't dressed like she is a millionaire. She just kind of is, you know, not like wearing any labels, anything like Love that. It. but. You have to treat everyone kindly and with respect and you know you can't assume things about people like you can't make an assumption off of someone as soon as you meet them that's what i've learned i think people do miss that's a great point i yeah. think people mistake that so a lot of times i'll hear uh realtors mortgage people too insurance people yeah. they won't take a client on because they have this preconceived notion about they don't have money to spend ted yeah. they, they they couldn't possibly qualify for a mortgage or maybe they couldn't afford the insurance or the house. Yeah. And that's wrong. Exactly. That's wrong. It is wrong. So yeah. you close your $2.2 .2 million home, yeah. which is actually a big deal. It is a big deal when you're 24 years old. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big deal no matter yeah. what, but certainly at 24. Yeah. And you saved that money. Why? Yeah. Because I just wanted to have like a nice cushion and not, you know, I didn't want people to meet me and think I was money hungry or like, you know, thirsty or, you know, in desperate need of a check. Sure. So, because when you have that, like, security in the back of your mind, you can kind of be more relaxed and act more yourself. And I don't want people to think I was, like, a car salesman or anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> Right, that because helps. sometimes, just, just if you talk life. about, if you, if you go to a party, if you're a lawyer, an insurance agent, or a realtor, People treat you yeah. as if you're a mortician. Yeah. Like they don't even want to deal with they you. You're a you're a you. funeral home director. Yeah. Because they they just don't want to interact with that because yeah. in their minds everybody is a realtor, mm -hmm. an insurance person, a mortgage person, an attorney. Yeah. So how did you differentiate yourself? So you make this big sale early on, mm -hmm. and then what do you do? Uh, and this is for all business owners. It's not just real estate because you're an entrepreneur. And I always like yeah. to stress that because you're basically a business owner. You're it. it every, everybody answers to you. You answer to you. That's mm -hmm. how it is. Yeah. So how did you create the referral base? How did you figure out your marketing in the beginning so that you had income coming in or at least you knew you would have income coming in? Well, because I was so young, I didn't really have a sphere of friends that were ready to buy. You know, a lot of my friends were still in college and, you know, just kind of getting their life together. So I started buying leads online. So I would buy Realtor.com. I would buy Trulia. This was before they merged with Zillow. So I just started buying leads online as soon as I could. And then every year I'd up, up the spending and up the spending. And, you know, it was... That was the fastest way that I could do it and the easiest way that I could Because do you it. didn't have the sphere of influence. Yeah. I think people should not discount the different ways that you can market. For you, that worked. But you also probably figured out what your niche was. Mm -hmm. I think we were talking earlier before the show that if you buy leads, I don't care what industry you're in, you have to figure out the niche yeah. and then you have to be committed 
to calling them and following up to the nth degree, right? Yes, and you can't get discouraged if someone doesn't answer, you know, or if someone ignores you. You have to kind of stay persistent. And, you know, I like to think that little actions will, you know, done every day are going to yield big results. So it's really the, the little things that you do every day that sets you apart from someone else that, you know, and what do you do in the community before I get to, because I love the topic, right? Harnessing the power of now and I want to talk about that. But what do you do from a marketing perspective other than buy leads? Like, I think people will go, well, she buy leads, that's all she does. And I don't believe that. I feel like you're out yeah. in the market. People know who you are. How do you integrate yourself and make it so that the referrals, I would imagine, are huge for you. The, mm -hmm. the, the, you don't have to go out and advertise if you don't necessarily want to at this point. Mm -hmm. But what do you do community-wise in order to keep your name out there, in order for you to, to be successful? Yeah, really active on Instagram. I like being really open with people. Um, you know, I like talking about money. A lot of people don't like that. And, you know, we're always taught, like, it's one of the I love that. Talk about, about that a little bit. But it's important to bring facts to people. I agree. Because most buyers that start out, especially first-time home buyers, which I do a lot of, they're really uneducated on how everything works. They think they need 20% down all the time. Like, they, you know, it's our job to kind of educate them and provide value and let them know you know that it is possible to buy and you know these are the different programs available and just being really open and I'm also really open about you know when my deals are not going ideally because you know anything can change at any moment in this business I'm really open with you know sometimes this is really hard and sometimes you'll have to work with people that aren't nice and that don't want to do their job. I mean, so. come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing. That's so we're doing. I'm doing actually a presentation with Dan Pacheco today, and one of the we're talking about authentic marketing. And honestly, when you are out there and you're being authentic, which is what you're talking yeah. about, you have this vulnerability. You're sharing with people. Yeah. Look, this isn't going so well, guys. <laughs> I think people respond to that better. I yeah. feel like. Then you get a whole audience that goes, oh my God, I like Maria. She's yeah. telling it like it is. Yeah. The people who put on social media, I can't stress this enough, stop putting the BS out there. Nobody yeah. wants to see it. Yeah. They want to see the stuff that Maria is talking about. They want to hear that you're having a struggle, that you're not mm -hmm. perfect, that you're not, you're not closing every deal, that you're not a yeah. multi-billionaire and you're just sitting somewhere in Greece in Santorini. <laughs> Sorry, I had the conversation earlier, so it's on the brain. Yeah. But that is so important for people to be able to relate to you. Um, so talk about, I love the topic, right? So as you guys know, I usually ask the guests, my friends, I'm like, what do you want the topic to be? Do you have a mantra? Do you have anything? And of course, Maria came back with harnessing the power of now. And you know, I'm a big proponent of being present, being now, being in it, and how powerful that is. So when she said it, I'm like, oh yeah, we can talk about that all day. So first of all, talk about how that came into your life. And then I'd like you to talk a little bit about how you implement that daily, because it's mm -hmm. one thing reading a book, it's one thing reading all the things that Eckhart talks about, yeah. and, and then it's another thing actually living it. Living it, it. yeah. I re I've read The Power of Now, I wanna say about five times, and I, I started reading it like early in my career, I think like year one um, was when I discovered it and read it. And I think it's so important in our business because especially if you do a lot of volume so many times you get jaded by past negative experiences in a deal and then you bring that to your next deal Agreed. and it just doesn't set a good foundation for um you know for things to kind of flow and for everything to work out and this business can change on a dime like and this is a true story last week you know two weeks ago on that Friday, the last Friday in April, I had about a million dollars pending that day, just that day. Now from that million, I think only like 300 remains. Like things wow. change and deals die and people change their minds. And especially this year, I've noticed people, buyers are being a lot more fickle um, than they were before. But you just have to kind of roll with the punches, not let that discourage you, not let that pull you back. I mean, it happens to everyone, no matter how many houses you sell, deals will die. So, you know, you just kind of got to stay present, focus on what you have now, focus on doing a good job with the clients you have now, and then just keep it moving. Because if you get held back, 
you know, by those kind of limiting beliefs and, oh my gosh, but that fell through, then nothing's going to work out. Like, well, then yeah. that becomes your focus, right? Exactly. So instead of focusing all the, on all of the, I swear it's like Dorothy is out oh the window God, here. It's, it's scary. <laughs> um, so uh, the, if you begin to focus on the negativity, if that's mm -hmm. what your focus is instead of what you have going on positive, yeah. then guess what's going to happen? It's all going to be negativity. But yeah. what I want them to hear you say, and I know you feel this, is it just because Maria wants to harness the power of now, just because she is cognizant of the fact that she needs to be present, doesn't mean 24 seven she's the perfect angel oh, God, in being no. present and talk. So talk <laughs> about that because I think people come on the show and or they watch the show and they're like, well, I'm just not, I, I don't have the yeah. strength Maria has. I'm a naturally anxious person. And that's what a lot of people don't know about me. They don't know that I, you know, I, my mind, defaults to worry most of the time and it That's is a fair. daily like exercise to bring it back and say we're not going to live in this headspace it's something i have to do actively every single day and um you yeah, practice it right so it's yeah, like it's a, a muscle practice. i tell it's people it's like a muscle exactly. so if you don't use that muscle if you are constantly um, and I don't know if you have a chance, Anna, but if you want to turn the lights up just yeah, a little bit, like seriously, I'm pretty sure, I don't know what's happening, but the whole, it's over here, um, the whole Citrus Club is getting drowned out in some kind oh, yeah, of storm. It, it looks um, just hit the button, maybe. I feel bad. I mean, I feel like I'm golden, but oh, there we there go. We go. Thank better. you. Uh, but I feel like if you don't, if you don't exercise that muscle, what yeah. happens is you get so used to being in the negative. Yeah. Uh, so it's easy to get away from it. That's perfect, yeah. Donna. Thank you. So I feel like you have to, hey, Arlene, what's happening? I can't wait to see you. Um, I feel like you have to be cognizant 24-7. Yeah. It's not easy getting up here just because we come on a show doesn't mean that we're perfect at what we're no. talking about. It means that this is what we're trying to do and we want you to try yeah. to, but we also struggle. And also in this business, people are looking to you to secure them a home. Like it's such an important role that we play and you need to be like the balancing factor. You need to be the one who's calm. You need to be the one who's right. at peace. Cause then your clients are gonna see that. If you're freaking out, imagine how your clients are gonna feel seeing you freak out. Like Correct. you need to be like the equalizer. Um, so. Well, I like that, the equalizer. You have yeah, to be, right? You because, have to be. Because you that's your be. role. That doesn't mean that you don't have friends and colleagues that you vent to, or you oh, don't go, yeah. you don't have a cocktail, or do yoga, <laughs> or run, or whatever it yeah. is that gets your, gets your hormones going, or your pheromones going, you feel better. Yeah. You still have that, you're human. But when you're dealing with your clients, your job is to make sure that they feel good about the transaction, yes. that they're not stressed out like you are. Mm -hmm. They don't know all the ins and outs. That's why you're there. That's why That's you get paid. That's your mm -hmm. job. Yeah. And I think people misunderstand, and I've seen a lot of people, uh, people expect us to be the calm in their storm. You're time. right, Linda. Yeah. And that's what they that's what they want. I want that. When I'm hiring a professional, when I'm working in something, especially a home, that's your giant purchase of your yeah. life or your giant sale. I need somebody to be calm. I don't need somebody to be as neurotic as I am. <laughs> I need somebody yeah. to help me out. I need somebody to calm me down. Yeah. And if we're both not calmed down, that is a bad place to be for everybody. Exactly. All right, so how do you tell people, what were, what are some steps? Like, do you have um, a gratitude journal? Do you, every day, do you wake up and go, all right, I'm just going to focus on now. What are some yeah. things that you, you purposefully do in order for you to try to stay in the now and the present? So what I've been using lately, there's this app called Five Minute Journal. So it's, it's free in the um, app store. And so basically every morning you write three things you're grateful for, three things you want to I guessed to this. Today. I just did. I had no um, idea. You we write an affirmation and then at night you kind of reflect back. And my mom always taught me if you feel gratitude, you can't feel sad. Like gratitude like cancels out every other emotion, like sadness, anger, fear. If you feel gratitude, that kind of is like a blanket that covers all the other negative emotions. So that's really important. And also just try, like our mind is never in the present. Our mind is always thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen next week, thinking about what happened, you know, a week ago. You just have to literally take each moment as it comes 
and focus on what because you can only control your your own actions and your own thoughts you can't control what other people people do. don't like to hear that by the yeah. way i agree vic um be the duck on the pond i like that yeah. right so you're the calming he said in other businesses you're right be the calm yeah. but i think you're right i think that you you can't control that but what you can do is control how much power you give to it yeah. and so if you're not having a good day we all have crazy bad days yeah. that's why sometimes you see my posts and I'm not having a good week you yeah. know why I do that because people watch the show and they think his life is perfect yeah. everything's so good with Ted he's always happy and I am in general but I don't want you to think that it's always like that behind the scenes I'm constantly working that muscle and trying to figure it out and trying to figure out what I want to do and yeah. that's what you're saying and when you're being your advocate for your clients no matter what your business is you need to work on that stuff behind the scenes and not mm -hmm. bring it to your yeah. client yeah you need exactly. to stop doing it's that to put it in a little box and then you know put it off to the side correct and it's okay for you to not have a great day oh, yeah. but I don't want you to bring it to your client I, no. I I feel like people become because of the relationships that we establish you become friends, right, with your clients. Oh, yeah, you become very and I, I get it, right? But here's the deal. At some point, there's still that separation. Mm -hmm. And at some point, they're going to go, I love you, Maria, but you're stressed out and you're freaking me out right now. <laughs> so you have to figure out how to balance that out. Yeah. Same with on the mortgage side. We're honest taking apps. I mean, she may have a stressful day. Um, I don't really have stressful days on apps, but Anna might have one. And all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, this is crazy what's going on. Yeah. Is that what you want to say to your client? Oh my God, this no. is crazy what's going on. No, you don't want to no, say no. that. You want Why to come would back you with a solution. Correct. Yeah. Solution driven. And that's what happens when you are in the present. When you yeah. are trying to work in the now and the power of now, you're looking at solutions right at this moment. Yes. Uh, does it does it matter? Does it mean that you're not gonna go back and think about what ticked you off two days ago or what event you have coming up on Saturday that you're stressed out about? Yeah. No, but for your client and for what you're trying to accomplish, you need to stay focused. And really being in the present is being focused. Yeah. That's what you have to do. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna share all of, see how fast it goes? Yeah, Maria's so contact fast. information, how you can reach out to her. Don't you wanna learn more from her? I mean. <laughs> At a very, like and I say a young age, and I mean that respectfully, at a very young age, she's got a great handle, not a perfect handle, so don't read that, <laughs> a great handle on how you want to interact with people and how you can stay focused and present, be an advocate for your clients and your business, and yet still have your life. We're human. You're yeah. going to make mistakes. You're going to do crazy stuff. Uh, but we'll share all of that. I want you to reach out to her. She'll talk about yes, Eckert. Yes. She'll talk about uh, the power of now and all of that good stuff. Um, yeah. Linda says you're ding dang <laughs> right. I love her. So if you're going to present a problem, be ready with a solution. That should be a whole show about yeah. solutions. The worst is when somebody complains and there's no yeah, answer. Really. Give me an answer. Um, all right. So any parting words of wisdom for them? Anything you want to share before we head out? Um, stay in the now, stay present, stay grateful, and everything will just flow. <laughs> I love it. And guess what? It's flowing, but that doesn't mean it's perfectly flowing. Yes. I want you guys to know that. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't imagine how many messages I get, uh, Maria. Oh my God, Maria has it all together. She's amazing. Yeah, she does. That doesn't mean that she doesn't have issues on a daily basis oh, she's trying yeah. to figure out <laughs> and stuff she has to do and maybe she has a temper tantrum or two like we all oh do God, yeah. right <laughs> so I want you guys to know it's okay to have that but you still have to be working on exercising that muscle exercise mm -hmm. that muscle of being present and being here in yeah. the now and being the best advocate you can be whatever business you're in mm -hmm. for your client thanks for being on the show you're thanks a joy it was awesome yeah. we love you guys We'll see you soon. Bye, Stay safe in this crazy weather. <laughs>